Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me today. It's Jenny from A Stamping Journey. I have just received the super cute mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I thought we'd just take a look at it and we're going to do some embossing and die cutting and we'll make a card. But firstly, check it out against the standard one. I've got the standard one here. I don't know if you can see it. See the difference? This is still quite compact. I love how the sides fold up. But I love this for how cute it is, how light it is. And it's easy to just sit on your table while you're working and doing those quick projects. So... We're going to move the standard one out of the way and check it out. So, here we have our little mini stamp and cut emboss machine. It has the fold up flaps just like your standard one, and it's so compact and so cute. Let's have a look. We'll bring it down a little closer so you can see. Here we've got the plates included. So once again, with our plates, they're all numbered. So it makes it really easy when you come to emboss or cut, you can see how it works. So I was really surprised how thick the uh, main platform was. This is it, how thin it is, but it will show you. So for our die cutting, we've got number one plate, you're going to use the two plates and run that through. So let's get some card and try this out. So I've got some white card. I'm actually going to use these stitched whims stitch with whimsy dies. These are just new coming out in the 21 occasions catalog. I love the little curvy edge. So when you're using the mini one, you can only cut with something that's as wide as this. So any dies or any of your the mini embossing folders will fit through that gap. So if we follow the numbers, you're going to use a number one plate and the ones with number two. So let's bring them, put them in place here. Add your card. Now you want to make sure that your card and your die fits neatly on your plate. I've cut it to size for this so that it will run through. You want to keep the plates well aligned and put your number two plate on top. Now just a tip, you can offset these plates just to make it grab that little bit easier don't have them all completely butt up against this bottom platform. Just offset each one. It will help as it rolls through to pick those plates up to run through smoothly. Another tip in using it is position it in this position rather than on its side because it's easier to hold the top and to run it through with the handle. This is a lighter one so you will wobble around a bit but if you just secure your hand on that as you run through. So let's just put that through and grab it. And just give it a little bit of pressure. It does jump around, but that's okay. It's not a heavy machine to really hold that in place. Some people put those grippy mats underneath, that might help too. Nearly there, give it another little tug and you've gone through. Now check out this whimsy, curvy, whimsy die too while we're at it. How cute. I love those double stitched lines that's around. I hope you can see that. Now just another little tip when you're using that over time, if it does get a little wobbly, also check these feet. You've got the rubber feet, but just check there's no dirt or dust that's preventing it grip well. It's on paper here which can wobble around. Putting those mats down might help. Also, when you want to finish with it, you can just pack it up and put it to side while you finish with it. Um, but since we have die cut, I wanted to show you how to emboss. So open this up. We're going to get some card. 
Now I'm using the greenery embossing folder. It's one of the narrow ones, so it will easily run through. Just if we have a look at the catalogue, you'll notice in the catalogue under the embossing folders, it'll have that little emblem there. That will indicate that these embossing folders are suitable to run through your machine. There's a few and they, they come in pairs, which is quite uh, a good price. If you have a look at the dies, that also indicates that those dies will go through the mini embossing machine. So it does cater for a lot of the dies. Uh, in Australia, this mini machine is $104. It's great value. Uh, it's a great starter off too. Uh, so you can get it. The good thing is starting when it's available on 5th of January is it's part of the celebration. So for a purchase, you can choose one of the free celebration items, which is awesome. I'll add the link for the catalog in shortly. Uh, also, if you were to join Stampin' Up, which is a great time during celebration as well, you can get this part of your starter kit. You'll get $235 of products, including your machine. You can add that in, but only pay 169. So you're gonna save money in getting a machine as well. So that's something to think about. If you're in Australia, I'd love for you to can come and join my Gen Zinc team. We have a lot of fun. We've got a private Facebook group um, to get a lot of uh, stamping together as well. Uh, you can check that out in my comments and in the, the links below. So we're going to get an emboss now. So let's put our card in your embossing folder. And we're going to put it between your plate. So we'll bring in our main plate again, a number one. When you want to emboss, just have a look at this. There's actually two plates to emboss with. You have the darker gray one, you'll notice is using the 3D embossing folders. So that will show you which way to use that. The lighter gray is for our standard embossing folders, generally the thinner ones. And so for that, we'll need our plate one and our just one of our three. So we have these. When you're adding, putting a card through, just remember to put it through with the fold first. So it just puts less pressure on the, the roller as it goes through. Put it down on your number one, put your number three plate on top. Just offset that once again. Put those between your two, the, the two posi positions there and roll that through. It rolls through quite smoothly. A lot smoother than die cutting. You only need to do that once. And we have a really nice embossed image on it so easily. So we've got our die cutting and embossing. I think we need to make a card with these pieces. So we can now get put our little mini machine away. We'll put it over to the side over there. And let's see what we can do with these pieces. I'm actually going to use another new product available, the Art Gallery stamp set. These are gorgeous two-step stamp set. So I love that you can layer those together and get the different images. So, uh, let's bring some ink in. I'm going to use our Flirty Flamingo, Old Olive and Petal Pink. So, let's, I'm gonna move this down a little bit more so you can see. I'm gonna use, show you some tips how to line up those two-step stamps too. Firstly, you want to Stamp your leaf. Just give that a good inking. And we're going to stamp that down in our bottom corner. Give that a good press over. And it's not meant to fill the whole stamp. It's a little bit um, arty, so you get a little bit of washed and the images won't stamp all out, but that's the design of the stamp, so don't stress about that. Let's have our petal pink. 
We're going to do the solid flour for this. Ink that up. I'll just push that up a little bit. So once you ink that up, you know, if you're new to stamping, just give you some tips. You want to just tap it, just tap, 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 not rock it. And when you press it down on your card, you don't want to be rocking it once again. Just press firmly, press over the block to give you that good transfer of ink. All right, so we're going to use the Flirty Flamingo to add some dimension on that with our second part of that stamp. Ink that up. Now, just to show you how to line up this stamp on your flower, I check out this, you can see this straight, I hope you can see it, straighter line edge of your stamp there and there. I line that up with the top of your stamp. So if you position that first, it's great that you've got a clear block so you can see through that. We're going to have a look at that. And then this part is at the top edge of that stamp. So just hopefully I don't get my head in the way when I'm stamping, but I want to see it. Uh, let's have a look. And I'm then once those two are in line, I then check out the bottom and see that these are lined up over the bottom of the edge of the stamp. So press that down, give that a good press. So it's just a subtle little wash, like a paintbrush stripe with the color but it adds you that extra dimension. So you can use two color contrasts. You can use the same color, stamp off the um, first one, the solid one, ink it up, stamp it off on some scrap paper, stamp it down, then ink the, the line one on it straight on the flower. That gives you that uh, stamping off and the different color tones uh, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay, so I want to stamp the sentiment since we've got our flower happening. Let's stamp our sentiment. I'm choosing the sentiment on this art gallery one. I'm thinking of you. So we'll stamp that in the black. Press that down firmly. Now I'm going to cut that out with one of the dies in the art gallery. Let's bring those in. This is our floral gallery dies. These are the ones that go with the stamp set. If you can have a look at those. Let's bring it over this one. So we have two different shaped edges for your sentiment. We have the flower, so our solid flower. This is for the group, the bunch of flowers here. The leaves and this has got just stopping by oh that's I haven't even pulled that off yet just oh sorry about that gee that glue's hard isn't it I wish some of our glues like that the tape um, just want to say and you can add happy birthday congratulations um, that's really die cut I'm going to use that soon all right let's stamp our sentiment I think we need a little mini machine come in again. So this time we're going to die cut. So I need our bottom platform. And this time we're going to die cut. So we need our number two plate. So let's get this. We can just line that up on a plate. Can you see that? So we just want to center that. I love the little scallopy edge that you'll get on this. Put our plate two on top of it. Let's run that through. Hold it firmly. And with one turn, it'll cut. So it's quite a strong machine. And for this, it's, it's a bit like a postage stamp, isn't it? It has quite a cool edge on it. 
All right, let's move it out of the way. So we have our stamped piece, our sentiment, we've got our embossed card that we had. I'm going to put it all together. I'm using Floaty Flamingo here for our base. So we're just going to stamp, uh, sorry, glue that down. So I'm using the multi-purpose glue for it. Add a little bit around. And I'm just gluing that in from the card edge a bit. Now, when it's plain white card, sometimes I would emboss that with a subtle folder or stamp around it. I'm not going to do that today. Just keeping the card simple. But it's something very easily you could do. If you're going to emboss the white piece of card, you will need to use the, the standard embossing machine because it won't fit through our mini one. All right, so that's... Glue down there, let's glue our white card onto our flirty flamingo. I just want to line up. That's why I like using the multi-purpose glue because I can just give that a little wiggle to get it in position. It's just got that little bit of give. Alright, now I want to raise the stamped piece up so let's get our dimensionals we'll just add a few around the edge of the card add a couple in the center too just to keep it level right. grab these backing off ah, stubborn little things sometimes aren't they Sometimes if you press in the center of the backing, it will come up. Or if you've got the little uh, tool, you can just pick that off too. All right, we're just going to add that to the front of our card. Somewhere like that, I think. Let's move that up a little bit. All right. And I'm going to put our sentiment on. Just add a couple of dimensionals on the back there. Now, of course, it might be a simple card, but I like to add some other little elements. We're going to use the white Baker's Twine. I'm so glad that this has come back. I love using the white Baker's Twine just to add little bows or to tie around the cards. It's so easy to tie and being a thin, it does just doesn't seem bulky on your card too. So you're just gonna tie a bow Snip that off. Let's get our scissors and trim it up. I'm going to trim that little bit off too. Now to glue that down, the best way to do it is with our glue dots. So let's find the first glue dot. Put your bow directly onto the dot and peel off. Much easier than trying to peel off the dot and stick it wherever onto your your bow or your ribbon whatever you want to do just add that tiny little touch of the bow on there and you've got that there what's one of my cards without some bling i'm using the champagne rhinestones because it matches so well so we have our sweet card that we have used with the mini emboss machine. Uh, I hope you get one of those. They are so cute, so light, so easy to use. Uh, but with the gorgeous art gallery, which these products are going to be now available in the 2021 occasions catalog, which starts January 5th. I'm so excited. It's so beautiful. So if you need a catalog and you're in Australia, let me know and I'll drop one out to you. I will add the links as well. 
So thanks for visiting. Thanks for stopping by. If you're on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. If you're on Facebook watching it, give it a like. Share it with your friends. And um, I'll be back again soon with some more projects. Have a great day. Bye.